Have you ever wondered if you could study medicine outside of the United States? Maybe you're far into your career and now have just decided to switch over to becoming a physician. Perhaps you've even applied to US medical schools and haven't been successful, or you're just looking for a way to combine a good medical education with your sense of wonderlust. Either way, whatever the reason may be, there are a lot of options out there that a lot of people don't even know exist. So let me walk you through them. Welcome to the channel, my name is Frank and full disclosure, I have been accepted to one of these medical schools. I'll let you know which one it is when we get to talk about it. But generally, this video is just meant to give you a very nice overview of the options out there. I'm not personally saying that any of these particular schools are the right choice for you, but I do think it's very important to just be aware of what's out there so you can decide if one of these programs suits your needs depending on what you're looking for. Jumping straight into it, I do want to cover why someone would go to an international medical school rather than a US medical school. And the answer is pretty simple. This past cycle in 2021, there were 62,000 students applying to US MD schools and only around 23,000 got in. So we have a scenario where there's a huge demand for medical school spots and a very limited supply of seats available, essentially resulting in a huge opportunity for profit since that's 40,000 people looking for a pathway to become a physician. This isn't meant to say that international medical schools are bad, just that we have to acknowledge that this is a huge reason of why they exist in the first place. They offer an alternative pathway for people who would otherwise not have the opportunity to go through medical school and get that degree. That being said, not all international medical schools are created equal. There are those that are objectively seen as better than others, which is something I won't go into too much detail on, also, I won't be going over uh, residency matching. If you graduate from an international medical school, you will be considered an IMG or international medical graduate. And if we just look at the data, it is inherently harder for an IMG to match into residency. So this is why it's a huge concern for people to study internationally rather than domestically. Even though I do lean more towards the camp of people who think that uh, success in any kind of field disproportionately relies on the individual rather than the organization, we can't ignore that IMGs do have a harder time finding a residency position. And so this is something just to keep in mind as we go through this list. There's an insane amount of international medical programs that you could potentially be enrolled in, but for the purposes of this list, we're only using schools that can abide by two very specific and very important factors that I do think should be taken into consideration. Factor number one is that every school on this list has to be ECFMG approved. That's the Educational Committee for Foreign Medical Graduates. And if your school is not ECFMG approved, then basically the United States won't actually recognize your degree. So if you go to that school for like four years, you graduate, and you can't get an ECFMG certification, then you essentially wasted four years and that would suck. But this by itself is not actually a huge limiting factor. A lot of international medical schools have ECFMG approval. The main limiting factor for this list was actually the school's ability to participate in the federal student aid program. If you're gonna pay for your entire medical education out of pocket, then this doesn't really apply to you. But otherwise, if you're going to take out loans, it is significantly better to take out government loans for being a student rather than taking out private loans because private loans generally have a higher interest rate. So in the long run, by using government loans, you will save money. So with all of that information out of the way, we're gonna break things down by region, starting with the Caribbean medical schools. The Caribbean medical schools are by and large the most well-known alternative pathway to getting a medical degree in the United States, and that's because they're kind of made with that purpose in mind. Every single school that I researched for this video from the Caribbean specifically says that they are modeled after the United States medical school education system. And that's because the majority of their students are from the United States. They go study at these schools with the full intention of returning to the United States to work as doctors. The first school we're gonna look at is the American University of Antigua in Antigua. They do require an MCAT, but the score isn't really looked at too strictly, and they also do require classic pre-med courses. The special thing they have going for them is that they have an affiliation with FIU's Herbert Wartheim College of Medicine, which costs a little bit more to be involved in this program, but it allows students to participate in rotations with FIU-affiliated hospitals and interact with HWCOM staff, potentially accessing more research opportunities. For rotations, they have a very large hospital affiliation network throughout the United States, including some international locations in the United Kingdom, India, and one in Canada. Total tuition was a bit hard to narrow down, but it should be somewhere around $240,000. The second one is the American University of the Caribbean in St. Martin. The school used to require the MCAT, but due to COVID-19, they actually waived this for some applicants, 
although you still need to have the traditional pre-med courses done. Their special thing is that they have a campus in Preston in the United Kingdom. For rotations, they have a lot of affiliated hospitals throughout the United States and in the United Kingdom. Also, there are other international elective placements available. And finally, for tuition, it costs around $250,000. Next up is Saba at the bottom in the Caribbean Netherlands. The requirements for entry are generally the MCAT, but this is another one of the schools that waives it due to the COVID pandemic, but they do need 50 hours of patient care experience that can be anything from shadowing to just volunteering at a hospital to working in the healthcare field. So there's a lot of flexibility with that. Their special trait is that you don't need a bachelor's degree, just a minimum of 90 credits and a basic pre-med courses completed for you to be able to enroll in this university. For rotations, they have a lot of US affiliated hospitals and tuition costs $250,000. Next up is Ross in the island of Barbados. For requirements, they do need your MCAT and the average MCAT score in recent cycles was something around 493. Their special trait is that they offer an MD MPH program so you can do your MD degree and also have your masters of public health all in one. They're affiliated with hospitals in 10 different states and in the UK. And finally, their tuition is around $200,000. Although in my notes, I have that they have a lot of additional fees listed on their website. Next up is St. George's in the island of Granada. This is actually a bit tricky because there's a St. George's United Kingdom Medical School. Be careful not to mix those up. They do require an MCAT and the average for recent years was 498. Something special about them is that you can actually come there as an undergraduate. They have a four, five, six, and seven year program depending on where you are in your education. So the idea is that you can pretty much go to the school wherever you are in your pre-med path and enroll there and come out with an MD degree. For rotations, they have affiliated hospitals throughout the United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom. And for tuition, it should cost around $270,000. The last Caribbean medical school that we're going to cover on this list is the Medical University of the Americas in St. Keats and Nevis. For the requirements, you know, classic pre-med courses, they do require an MCAT, but it can be waived due to the COVID pandemic. Their special thing is that they have an option to go into a preparatory program before starting your medical school career. So in case you need extra preparation to start medical school, or if your grades aren't actually fit enough to get into this school, you can go to this program and then you can just go right into the medical school when you finish that program. For the rotations, they have affiliated hospitals in the United States and Canada, and the tuition is to around $230,000. And that's it for Caribbean schools. Remember, these are the ones that are most commonly known by everyone. Now let's take a look at the programs that a lot of people don't know about. So we're gonna start off with the Atlantic Bridge program that is specifically designed for United States and Canadian residents slash citizens to be able to apply to Irish medical schools, dental schools, pharmacy schools, etc. Within this program, there are four schools that actually meet our criteria that we mentioned in the beginning of this video. And to apply to them, all you have to do is go to the Atlantic Bridge Program page and just fill out one application and you can send it to all four schools. Anyways, let's look at the schools. First up is the National University of Ireland in Galloway. For their requirements, this school doesn't actually require an MCAT or a lot of pre-med courses. And that's because their special trait is that they have a five and a six year program. The six year program is for high school students. So theoretically, you could come out of high school and just go directly into this medical school and then return to the United States six years later with a medical degree. The five-year program is for high school students that have completed certain college credits or for people who already have a bachelor's degree. Rotations in the school are mainly in Ireland, so you're gonna spend the most of your time there, but there is the possibility to use your electives as away rotations in the United States, though you will probably have to arrange these yourself. And tuition for the school costs around $280,000 for the five-year program. Next up is the Royal College of Surgeons in Dublin. You do need an MCAT to get into this one. They require a minimum of 500. The special thing for this one is that you can apply straight out of high school, but they also have an option for a four-year medical degree program. And that's the program that you would need your MCAT score for. Rotations for this school will mostly take place in Ireland again, but in the fourth year, there is an option to do rotations in the United States with certain affiliated hospitals. Finally, tuition is around $260,000 for the four-year program. The third school is the University College of Dublin in Dublin. I'm not really sure if this school actually requires an MCAT score, 
but they do offer a four-year, five-year, and six-year program. The four-year program is for people who already have a bachelor's degree, and then the five and six-year are for people coming out of high school. The special thing about the school is that it is actually the biggest university in Dublin, so that gives you a lot of access to different research options and things of that nature. Rotations, again, take place mainly in Ireland, but they do have international options available that you can apply into. And finally, tuition is around $250,000 for the four-year program. Our last Irish medical school is Trinity College Dublin in Dublin. For this one, the MCAT isn't required since it's a five-year program, but you are required to have a minimum GPA of 3.3. Best about this school is that it has a lot of name recognition, and it's also the highest ranked school in Ireland. Like all of the others, most of the time you will be spending your time in Irish hospitals, but you do get 12 weeks of electives that can be completed abroad, so those can theoretically be used to train in the United States. Finally, tuition for this one is $260,000. Now we're gonna take a look at another European country, and this time it's Poland. And no, you don't need to know how to speak Polish to go to medical school in Poland. This specific program is taught entirely in English, so you don't really have to worry about the language, although if you pick up some Polish along the way, I guess that's a, that's a bonus. Anyways, the university is called Jagolian University Medical College, sorry if I mispronounced that, and it is located in Krakow, Poland. Now the school does require an entrance exam. It doesn't look like you require an MCAT, but you do need to do their entrance exam. They used to have a four-year program and a six-year program, but they recently closed the four-year program off, so now they only have the six-year program. So you would have to apply out of high school, or I guess if you wanna do a six-year program instead of a four-year program, you could theoretically do that as well. Rotations take place in Poland, but it does seem that they allow away rotations in the United States and Canada, although it seems that you have to arrange these yourself. Finally, tuition for this school is the lowest of all the medical schools on this list. It is $100,000. Now there's one more European country that has schools that qualify for both the ECFMG certification and US government loans, and those both of them are in England. The thing is, I wasn't able to find out too much information about these programs, so these will you have to just do your research yourself, but I can tell you what they are. The first one is St. George's University of London, and the second one is the University of Lancaster. What I will say about these two schools is that they're not necessarily designed for United States students. So of course you're gonna be doing rotations in the United Kingdom. You're essentially going completely to another country to do their version of medical school. It's not like the Caribbean schools where it's designed after United States medical schools, it is their own system. So just take that in mind if you are considering these as an option. Outside of Europe, we can actually go to the Middle East where we have two different medical schools that are available for United States students. Specifically, both of them are in Israel, which does have very close ties to the United States. The first option is the Sackler School of Medicine at Tel Aviv University in Tel Aviv. The Sackler School of Medicine is a very special program between New York and the state of Israel to get students that have trained in the state of Israel at Tel Aviv University qualified to become doctors in the United States. And because of that, it is only accessible to United States or Canadian citizens slash residents. For this particular school, the MCAT is a requirement, and I couldn't find any official numbers on if there's a minimum or anything, but online I saw one person on Student Doctor Network say that his class's MCAT average was a 510, and then another source online said that the average was around a 505. In terms of rotations, uh, years one and two, which are the pre-clinical years, take place in Israel, and then for year three, you actually go back to the United States to do some rotations here in US-based hospitals, and for year four, you return to Israel to finish up your degree over there. And finally, the tuition for this school is only $160,000 for the entire four years. The second medical school in Israel is the Technion American Medical School in Haifa, Israel. The school does require an MCAT. It requires a minimum of 500 and a minimum of 125 in each of the four sections. The special thing is that it is only available for United States citizens or residents to apply. So it's a special program only for US students. For rotations, uh, most of the time you will be in Israel, although the first half of the fourth year is actually spent in the United States. But outside of that first half of the fourth year, you will spend most of your rotations in Israel. And lastly, tuition is $160,000. All right, so the last option is to go literally to the other side of the world, to Australia. There are two medical school programs in Australia where you can go as a United States student and come back to the United States to practice as a physician. The first program is Flanders in Adelaide. It does have an MCAT requirement and the minimum is 492 with 123 in each section. 
The thing about this program is that it looks to be primarily international. So it's not really targeted towards United States students. It's more of an international thing where people can go there to get their medical degree. In terms of rotation, they do take place mainly in Australia. Although it looks like you can do electives to rotate around in the United States hospitals, but it's kind of like other schools on this list where it's not super official. It's something that you will have to more than likely arrange yourself. And finally, tuition for this program is $304,000. Saving the best for last, it is my favorite school because it is the school I'm going to. It is the University of Queensland in Brisbane, Australia. To get into this particular school, you need to have an MCAT above 504, so 504 is the minimum. And in terms of GPA, just have at least a B average. What's special about it is that this specific program is only available for United States citizens or residents. In terms of rotation for this program, since it is a partnership between the Oshner Healthcare System in Louisiana and the University of Queensland, the last two years of the program mainly take place back in Louisiana with Oshner themselves. So you do most of your rotations over there while you do still do some rotations back in Australia. And finally for tuition, the entire program on their website says it costs somewhere around $280,000. And that's it. Those are all of the international medical schools that I would probably take a look at if you're considering going international, whatever your reason may be. And if you want to hear more about the University of Queensland Oshner program and why I picked that program specifically, I am going to talk a little bit more about that in a video. I'm probably going to post two days after I post this one. But besides that, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. Do make sure to smash that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Goodbye.